Hello there, and welcome to Get Productive with Microsoft Azure Deployment Templates. This is episode four entitled Review ARM Template Syntax. My name is Tim Warner. I have three learning goals in this lesson. First, we're gonna define the Azure Resource Manager template format. Next, we'll review ARM template data types. And third, we'll discuss ARM schemas and their importance. You can get to the overall TOC of this course by pointing your browser to timw.info slash ARM. Let's get started. At right on the slide, you can see a brand new Azure Resource Manager template that includes all of the available elements. We won't use all of these, at least not initially, but some of them are required. Let's go through them one by one. First, we have the schema declaration. This is a required element, and it's going to define the template language version against which we're validating the deployment. The content version element is also required. This is for your change tracking purposes. It needs to be a four integer value, for instance, 1.0.0.0. And because you and your team are hopefully tracking these template files in version control, like Git, you can alternatively, or in addition to that, provide content version over time. API profile is an optional element that's useful for API version tracking. For instance, you might have templates that you want to deploy both to the Microsoft Azure Public Cloud and Microsoft Azure Stack. Those resource definitions are going to have different API versions. Profiles help you sort those out to make your templates more modular. Perhaps we'll get to that eventually in this course. Parameters are optional, but extraordinarily useful. These are runtime deployment values that you pass in at deployment. Variables, optional, but also, again, very useful for reusable expressions or just data elements that you're going to plug in to the resources part of your template. Functions is where you can actually store user-defined functions. This can simplify business logic where you can run the function and use its results in the resources part of your template. Resources define all of the resource types that are in the deployment. And lastly, we have outputs, which is optional. This is going to be post-deployment return values that you want to see. There's lots of good proven practices with ARM template development that I'll sprinkle into this training. For instance, commenting your code. Output values can be a useful check to make sure that the deployment has completed successfully and can give you useful data that you might need to pass on to another process. If we look at the JSON, we can see different value types. The double quoted value, we have the ability to define an object as a result in nested objects. Remember, the whole JSON document is an object, and then we've got nested objects. Arrays are denoted by square brackets. And there's also the possibility of creating expressions. When you're value uses both double quotes and square brackets. This tells Azure Resource Manager that you want to conduct an expression. That is, you want to build a more complex result. There are a number of built-in template functions that we'll get to eventually. Concat is one where you can concatenate two or more pieces of string data. And if you have a static literal string, you'll use single quotation marks for that. And then func is not a real function name. I just did that as a placeholder. But above all, at this point, I just want you to know that if you've got a double quoted value with square braces inside or square brackets inside, you're dealing with a template expression. We'll see that in the demo. The Azure Resource Manager JSON schema supports a number of data types. String is just a character sequence. Secure string is a string value, but Azure Resource Manager will hide the plain text value during and after deployment. The template itself, even though you declare, say, a parameter like a password parameter as a secure string, you're going to need to provide a plain text input unless you want to do something else to hide the plain text. And you absolutely want to do that something else because you never ever want to have secrets passwords, API keys, you don't want to have those values in plain text, even though the data type for them in your ARM template is secure string. We use the array data type for multiple elements or values. Integer gives you numeric data. Bool is Boolean, true or false. You actually use those words, true or false. And then there's two types of object where you can pass an entire JSON object as a data type, or you can take that object and mark it as secure object, in which case Azure will hide the plain text value of the object during and after deployment. The ARM schema, as I've mentioned, we flirted around with this concept a bit thus far. 
First of all, they're available at GitHub. There's a short link, timw.info slash arm schemas. I'll give you another link in just a moment. But the schema is a JSON document that fundamentally defines the allowed resources, resource types in your deployment. These schemas have a parent-child relationship. We're concerned for resource group deployments with schemas that are named deployment template.json. But if you go into GitHub and look in there, you'll find every resource provider, storage accounts, web applications, functions, all of that has their own schema that defines legal values that you can pass in to that resource type, okay? Now, the good news is that there's a parent-child relationship. That is, in your ARM template, you just need to denote a top-level schema, and then it will be smart enough to understand during a validation process to pull all of the child resource-specific schemas, because that would be way too much to keep track of if you had to track the child schemas as well. There's also in Azure the concept of different deployment scopes and Microsoft has different root level schemas for resource group subscription and management group deployments. We're concerned in this course principally with resource group deployments. The HTTPS endpoint is schema.management.azure.com and then it's slash schemas and then here's the important part, the API date. And as you can see on right, there's three of them for resource group deployments. And I would suggest unless you have reason to do otherwise, use the latest version. And as of this recording in late December 2020, it's April the 1st of 2019. There are previous versions published, January 2015 and April of 2014, and the problem with using an older schema version is that it's likely not going to contain schema definitions for resources that have been published much past that point. Even though we're in late 2020, Microsoft regenerates their schemas typically nightly. And remember, all of the resource schemas as they come online for new products and new features will be picked up by the parent. So you're pretty safe by default using the latest, which again is April 1st, 2019. Let's go into a demo and let's turn this theory into practice. Okay, we have a lot of work to do in this demo, so let me cut right to the chase. I'll give you these URL addresses in for further learning, so don't worry about scrutinizing my address bar. Here we're at the Azure Resource Manager Schemas repository at GitHub. This is the source of authority for all of the ARM schemas. And if you go into the schemas folder, you can get lost pretty quickly going through not just the parent. In fact, that's a question. How do you find the resource group parent schemas when there's this sea of different versions and resource definitions and so on? Here's a really useful tip for you. From the Azure Resource Manager schemas page, let's click go to file. And now let's type deployment template.json. Remember, JSON is case sensitive. And in here, we want to pay attention not to the alternative ones like subscription, management group, but just the deployment template.json. And I showed you this on the slide. There's three. There's 2015, 2019, and then there is 2014 preview. And we want to standardize on the latest so that we're validating against the latest version and latest resource definitions. Next, you'll want to bookmark this page called Define Resources and ARM Templates. This is going to give you the fundamental definitions, the JSON definitions of all generally available Azure resources. And again, you're good just by doing filtering here. So let's do a search for storage account. And even at that, there's many, many ways that storage accounts are defined in Azure Resource Manager. Let me scroll down and just go to the garden variety storage accounts definition. And what you'll find on these definition pages is a template format. And this shows you the specific JSON that you'll add to your template. In this case, it's saying to create a storage account resource, add the following. And notice that you can helpfully copy and then paste this JSON directly into your template. So it defines all of the elements that are going to be required or optional. And you can see underneath the JSON, there's a run of all of the property values telling you what the data type is, whether it's required, and then very importantly, the legal values. So for instance, instance, for storage account kind, notice that that kind has to be storage, storage v2, blob storage, file storage, or block blob storage. So that is a very important resource for you to have handy. Now let's go into VS Code. And I actually have a storage account template already under development, as you can see here. And you can see on line two, I'm already using the latest version of that deployment template. But what would happen if we manually specified an older version? Well, it'll probably give us errors, particularly if we're using resources or properties that are not in the version of the schema that we're declaring. So I'm going to choose, let's see, why don't I do 2014 April 1 preview? 
and see if anything happens. Note that we can come down to the bottom of the file where your mouse turns into a double-headed arrow and we can bring up our terminal. That's one way to do it. Another would be to open the terminal menu and select new terminal and we'll want to go to problems. And actually there's no problems yet, but I'm going to create a problem here. So let me come down and let me go into, let's see, resources, let's change the kind of the storage account to something I know is illegal. I'll call it super storage. And notice as soon as I type that, we see in the problems pane that we failed validation. And it tells us here that the value must be one of the following values. And it tells us based on the schema we used, what the legal values are. Now I'm going to do file new file and let me save this. We should be working in a folder. I know I've mentioned that before. I'll just call this template.json. And we can see in the lower right the language mode is JSON. But when I invoke the snippets and bring out a skeleton of a template, we should see that the language mode now shows up as Azure Resource Manager template. That's what we want to see. And now if I change the schema here to 4.1 preview, dash preview, it's coming back with issues here. Property name is not allowed by the schema. Yes, this notion of user defined functions didn't exist in the 2014 April 1 preview schema definition. You see, I'm just trying to light up problems right off the top to show you how you can solve these when your template fails validation. Eventually, it might take me to quit and reopen the application, but VS Code is normally pretty good about detecting out of date schemas. In fact, let me try this just for grins. Let me close my editor here and let's just reopen. Actually, let me quit out of code. Exit right out. The executable program name for VS Code is code. And if you installed VS Code, adding it to your search path, you can type code just about anywhere to get that back. There we go. See, warning, you're using a deprecated schema version that's no longer maintained. Would you like to use the latest? I'm going to say use latest. And then if I zoom in, we can see that we're now on the April 1st, 2019 deployment template schema. Good. That's exactly what we want to see. For further learning, the ARM template reference shortcut is timw.info slash temp4a. ARM schemas at GitHub, you can go to timw.info slash temp4b. And if you want to learn how to make your own Visual Studio code snippets, go to timw.info slash temp4c. Thanks so much for your participation. As always, our next episode is entitled Leverage Azure Quick Start Templates. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, the course TOC is at timw.info slash ARM, Twitter, Tech Trainer Tim, Pluralsight courses, timw.info slash PS. My website is techtrainertim.com. Take care.